Some of the most common data structures you'll encounter in R are vectors, matrices, and data frames. Vectors are a collection of values that all are the same data type. So if you had a vector that had a set of numbers in it that went from 1 to 12, that would basically be a vector of length 12 with the values 1 through 12. A matrix is very uh, similar to a vector in the sense that all the values of a matrix also have to be the same data type, except there is a two-dimensional structure to it. So uh, you'll see something like this, where a matrix can have maybe three columns and four rows, but all of those have to be the same data type. Just like a vector, you can't have uh, character values intermix with numeric values in a matrix. So even though a matrix is a two-dimensional type of data structure in R, it's not at all the same as a data frame because it can't have different types of data in it. It has to have all the same types of data. So it's almost a vector in disguise uh, mapped onto two dimensions. On the other hand, a data frame uh, has to have column names and each column is a vector. So in this data frame that I'm showing you here, the ID column is a numeric vector or an integer vector with the values one through four. Disease is a character vector with four different uh, types of diseases listed there. And diabetic underscore status is a logical vector with true and false values. So as you can see, even though a matrix and a data frame are both two-dimensional data structures, a matrix is actually a lot more like a vector than it is like a data frame because you can't mix variable types. Whereas the most ty common types of data that you'll actually work with in this course and outside of this course are going to be two-dimensional data structures that actually look a lot like data frames. If you want to generate a vector, here's a couple of examples of how you can use code to do that. Um, you can separate values with a, with a comma using the C function, and that was one way to assign values to a vector. You can use colon uh, between numbers as a way to count by one between the first number and the second number. Interestingly, if you wanted to count from 10 back down to one, you could just flip this and say, my vector equals 10 colon one, and that would actually count backwards from 10 to one. Like I said, vectors don't have to be numbers, they can be characters, and so this is one way that you could uh, set character values is to have uh, use the C function to combine them. And as I mentioned earlier, a matrix is just a two-dimensional vector, so you could define it the same way that you define a vector, except you can tell it how many columns you want or how many rows you want, and it'll map it out uh, appropriately. A data frame is a two-dimensional data set where each column is a vector. And so if you wanted to assign a data frame or generate a data frame from scratch called my underscore df, you could use this function data.frame, id equals 1 through 10, sbp, standing for systolic blood pressure, equals 151 to 160. And what this would effectively do is generate a data frame with 10 rows and two columns where the column names are id and sbp, and the row values are uh, specified as 1 through 10 for ID and 151, counting by 1 up to 160 for systolic blood pressure. A tibble is just like a data frame, except it's a tidyverse version of the data frame. And so the way you specify a tibble is very much the same. You can pretty much just switch out the data.frame function with the tibble function. And a tibble acts like a regular data frame in nearly every way, but it has some advantages that we'll get into a little bit of in this class. Um, but to some degree, you'll have to trust me. And if you have questions about what some of these advantages are, I can go into them in more depth um, at a later time. Finally, lists are irregular data structures that can contain any other data structure. And we pretty much won't talk about these, uh, even though you'll kind of see them Indirectly, you won't directly deal with them in this class. When you think of a data frame that has a data set, kind of like when we looked at the NHANES data set in our lab, you'll notice that 
it can have different types of data within each of the columns. And so one type of data that you might have is an integer. An integer refers to a type of number that is always a whole number. It could be negative, it could be zero, but it's never a fraction. A numeric is sometimes also called a double. This is basically any type of data that has decimal points um, with it. And so if you're talking about you know, fractions, uh, whether it's between zero and one, or whether it's you know, any number that uh, has uh, data after the decimal point, that's a numeric uh, value. Logical vectors or you know, logical columns are basically true-false columns. Character vectors refer to any columns that have uh, values that are, you know, typically people refer to as strings. So if the, you had a column that had someone's name in it or what disease they had and it was the actual name of the disease, that would be a character vector. Factors refer specifically to a data type in R that handles categorical variables. We generally will try to avoid factors because there's a lot of complexity when you work with factors that can actually introduce errors into your code. In fact, if you use the read.csv function that comes with R to read in data sets, many of the character variables will get, will get converted into factor variables by default, and this can lead to errors in your code down the line that are unexpected. And it's one of the reasons why I like to stay completely within tidyverse and so that when we read in a file using read underscore CSV, any character variables will actually stay as character variables when you read in the data set. And finally, date is another type of data structure. Um, and these are, this is not a comprehensive list. There's actually others uh, that go beyond this. But this is the most common types of data elements that you'll be dealing with when you think of you know, individual columns in a data set. There's three special values to be aware of that you might see as you're looking at uh, elements in a, a column of data. One is NA, and this is kind of the most common value that you'll see. That's not kind of something that you would necessarily have expected. NA literally stands for missing value. Um, and it's kind of standard lingo throughout R that you know if the value is NA, that value is missing. And that typically that means you have to do something about it when you are going to analyze that uh, column. Null stands for nothing. Um, in some other languages, null can mean missing, but in R, null has a completely different meaning, and we actually, for the most part, won't deal with it at all. And NAN, which you might see rarely, stands for not a number. So if you type in infinity divided by infinity, which is INF divided by INF with capital I's, you'll get a value, not a number, because you can't calculate it.